All right. Uh, you got all those tennis names down. We were just discussing them in the commercial break. She knows them. Frontwards, backwards. Do you, like, spell them in your sleep or something? Because I screw them up constantly. Well, I, I, get them right? I drive around town saying these these tennis names. Djokovic. Said, yeah. Djokovic. Sharapova. Azarenka. Kohl's. Schreiber. Yeah, it's fun. And I have a German last name myself, so I kind of sympathize with them. Yeah. Yeah, Bueller's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> the spelling is. There is an E. Oh, and an yeah. H in my last yeah, right name. There. All right, right, let's get right, to it. Let's right get there, to right, it. Right there. We know the BNP Paribas is in full swing, and this weekend I had the chance to catch up with some tennis fans who love to have fun and raise funds for cancer research. Now, the Cancer Research Racket is a dedicated group of tennis fans who are cancer survivors or friends and family of those touched by the disease who travel to the coolest tennis events on the globe, determined to raise their glasses, awareness, and funds to beat the disease. Now, founder Rob Keenis, a 10-year cancer survivor himself, told KMIR his story. Well, we had started this about 10 years ago. Um, I, my cancer treatment ended in June of 2005, and we wanted to give back because I'm alive today because there was a new protocol that saved me. And so our group gets together to fund cancer research grants through the American Cancer Society. And he also spoke about how the group has grown in numbers as well as dedication to the cause. So we started this again right in the middle of 2005 with a group of about 25 to 30 in Las Vegas. Over the years, it has caught on. So we're approaching 8,000 people now. Um, as far as the passion for the group, it's been really surprising that since we wear our love of, of advancing cancer research on our sleeves, we don't, we don't hide that fact. It's, it's amazing how many people have had a cancer experience, either personally or within their family or their close set of friends. So once they learn that this group cares and that's their primary purpose, they're all in. And co-founder Laura Lynn McCarthy believes this group's success has to do with its inclusive nature. Well, I think what Rob did from very early on was to make Cancer Research Racket a in very inclusive organization with a loose structure, so there's no commitment to have to do one thing a year, five things a year, ten things a year, or anything a year. And he started out with, hey, just come and join us and donate $50. And if you can donate $50 and come and play tennis with some of our friends and have some fun with adult beverages, we'd love to see you. And so we started with a group of maybe 10 and have grown to well over 7,000 through the years, all because anybody can participate at whatever level they want, whenever they want. It was really neat to get to go and hang out with them for uh, some hours at Stadium 2 on Saturday. And of course, with so many people being touched by the disease, if you'd like to get involved, it's really easy. Just go to cancerresearchracket.com for more information or just to donate. And that sports brought to you by Legal Doc by me. All right, and Pretty you know, cool story, uh, Dan. yeah, you know, my family touched by it. I lost my brother about six and a half years ago to cancer. He was only 39, Man. so about a year younger than me. And so, uh, great cause, great uh, effort they're doing out there to help people with cancer. Thanks and have me. fun. Appreciate it. And have fun. <laughs> yeah, you should have fun. It's important too. 47 minutes past the hour still to come right here on KMR today. Uh, we're going to take you to that small Pacific.